Welcome everyone to our final Juno webinar for this year. This is Juno Tips and Tricks final chapter. Thank you for joining us. If you have not seen the others or missed any of them, we will get uh, get links out to you so you can go check some of those out as well. But this is a great way to just wrap up everything we've done all throughout the year related to the Juno. We do have two panelists today and they have been with us throughout this series, beginning with Justine Taylor, the Low Vision Product Manager for APH, and Mike Wood, Strategic Accounts Manager Education from Vespero. Now they are continuing this series and finishing it up for us today. We thank both of them for joining us and for all the help that they've provided everyone in getting to learn this still fairly new product. Our learning objectives today. We're going to review the different reading views in Juno. There are several of them. Uh, we will go through those for you. We'll observe exam mode, uh, get an idea of what it is, how it works, and uh, what the point of it is. And also ask questions, request demos, provide feedback, and problem solve any issues. Maybe it's something we've covered in the first webinar, we never covered it, maybe we went through it too fast and you just need a refresher. This is the time to get those questions answered today. Some challenges. Teachers need to know how to activate teacher settings and what functions to select to allow a student to use Juno during, a, during an exam. With so many of options of how to read on the Juno, we'll review how to change reading views. And as we said, uh, it's very important that you place your questions or requests for demonstrations in the chat today so that we can have a record of them and try to go through as many of those things as possible. We have some that were sent to us already that we're going to be going through, uh, but if you didn't get to send one or maybe you had another one you wanted to, to send it's a great time to to do that so let's get started with all of this information we're going to turn it over to justine to begin hi everyone um thank you for joining me today thank you paul and we're going to just jump right in and get started with talking about reading with juno um, you can use Juno to read text and images. Um, what you'll want to do is lay your reading materials flat on the desk or the table, and you're going to open the stand, um, the Juno stand. You'll open that, and you'll lay the Juno flat on the, the book or the worksheet or whatever uh, material you're trying to read, you're gonna lay the Juno right on top of there and you're gonna move Juno across the page as you read. And that's in live, the live view when you're using Juno's camera. And when you open the stand, the, the camera will automatically rotate. So it's facing down to your reading material. Um, we have, done a webinar previously on all the different camera positions um, so you can go back and review um, how to use Juno's camera um, but for the purpose of reading you'll just use the you can use the stand um, and the camera will automatically rotate to that reading position and the best way to freeze or capture an image is you're gonna close the stand. So when you close the stand, the camera automatically uh, rotates 90 degrees to face down to your reading uh, material. And you're gonna hold um, Juno over your text and you're gonna press the, the capture button which is the, the top um, right-hand button on Juno. And that is gonna allow you to, to capture, um, you know, catalogs, menus, uh, paragraphs, any other uh, printed reading material. So that's how you can use Juno 
to read. It has um, physical buttons and it has um, touch screen uh, menu buttons as well. And also when you capture the, the image, you can pinch to zoom on the screen to enlarge um, the text. You can zoom in and out. Uh, and you can use one finger and drag on the screen to pan that enlarged image as well. And you can change the color contrasts and everything like you would on a normal handheld video magnifier. Um, so that's how we read what you know. And the next couple of slides are going to show you how to get the best um, screen capture. So I've got two images uh, or two uh, pictures on the slide. And one is uh, kind of a bad example of a screen capture and a good example of a screen capture. So you're gonna wanna zoom out fully to get all of the text into the frame. So my first image here that you can see the, the text is cut off um, and the full paragraph is not in the, the frame of Juno because it's zoomed in. So you're gonna wanna zoom out fully and then take your capture. So the, the image on the right here, the photo shows a good screen capture where all of the text is seen and fills the, the frame and there's no text cut off. And then again, my next slide shows two examples of um, how to capture text successfully. And we've got, um, you're gonna want to, um, you're gonna wanna rotate Juno to fit all the text into the frame. So our first photo here is of a poor example of capturing text. So you're gonna wanna get a good clean capture. Um, so when you OCR that you get the best um, OCR, the best image so it's clear. Um, so this first picture is of a, a paragraph where there's a lot of white blank space. And again, the text is cut off at the top and the bottom. So what you can do is you can rotate Juno to portrait. So you can take um, captures in landscape or portrait view. So you can rotate um, the orientation of Juno in any direction you can rotate and get the best capture. So the good example on this slide shows that um, the orientation has been rotated to portrait and that whole paragraph fits in there nicely and there's no text cut off at the top or the bottom and there's no extra um, white space to confuse the the recognizing text. So you so a question just, with that, Justine. Uh-huh. If I were to take the photo, so the way that you're telling us to take it on the right hand side, yeah. If I take it sideways, is Juno going to flip that text the correct way for me? So then it will read it correctly and, and show up on the screen? Yes. Um, absolutely. Good question. Awesome. Yeah. So um as soon as you take your capture and you hit the recognize. Um, text, the OCR uh, button, it's going to automatically rotate all of your text to be in the correct uh, view, the orientation. And that was a question that we had from the audience that I wanted to make sure we got in there. <laughs> yes, so, thank you. Right, yeah, no, you're welcome. <laughs> okay, now I am going to demonstrate um, capturing some pages using Juno and how to save those captures and how to access your um, files in the file manager. So I am going to switch over to Juno. 
All right, I'll stop screen sharing. And I just have a, a kid's book here that's got full, it's like a bunch of bedtime stories. And I'll just show you how you can get the best capture. Let's see if you can, can you see the, Yes, we've got your, uh, the Miko's Wild Ride on the screen. Oh, okay. Spotlight. Can we spotlight her too as well? Yes, I've got her pinned. Let me spotlight her as well. Okay, hang on. I'm going to, so I'm closing the stands. And I now have um, the Juno stand is closed. And I'm actually rotating this to be in. Um, portrait view so I can capture this page this whole page let's see whoops oh did we lose it yes we did lose that yep So while you're reconnecting there, Justine, I'll also mention uh, the nice thing with this is that once you do capture this, you know, obviously we can save it and whatnot, which you'll get to. Um, and there you go. So now you're showing how it's captured. And this was a question that came in was how Juno deals with any shakiness or unsteadiness when you're taking a photo. I could see a little shakiness on the camera. So we'll see how that impacts the image that Juno is processing. And there is a slight delay um, that when you take, when you hit that capture button, you do want to wait until you hear that shutter sound. So a lot of people will press the button and then start to move the Juno thinking that as soon as I hit the button, it takes the photo. You want to wait until you hear that capture sound. And then once you hear the capture sound, then it's actually, that's snapped to the picture and it's, it's now, you know, basically saved in there. All right, so we can see the main menu now, Justine. Oh, okay. Sorry, I'm not sure why it's... No worries. Sometimes with those video capture cards, they're... Yeah, it's there. not... I can try from this side, too. No. Give me a second here. I can try it one more time, and if it's not going to work, I'll let you go for it, because... I I did this earlier and I do have a I have a saved a saved story that I, I captured earlier I just wanted to try it live here all right we can see the image okay perfect recognize text so I just tap the recognize um, text button and it's going to process this and you can see it flipped that image to the correct orientation and it's putting it into the zones. So when you take a capture, it will do it will go straight to the. Uh, different zones, so if you want to do um, another page. You just press the capture button again and it says add image. So you can you can decide to recognize the text now, or you can save it and add images, or you can just keep adding them and do all of that at the end. So it's up to you. So when I hit the capture button, it said add image and it took me to the live uh, magnifier. So I'm just gonna turn the page and take another another capture here and I'm tapping the screen to focus. And that's another secret little trick almost is when you are holding it above the text, if you're noticing that the text looks a little blurry or anything like that, you can tap the screen and it will come into focus. Recognize text. Discard image and add another. 
So you can discard that and do it again if you didn't think it looked quite right. I'm trying to get my lamp lights on the page. <laughs> you need really good lighting. Okay. All right, so now we can save that and you just hit the save button and you can say, yes, I want to save yes. this. And it's gonna automatically ask if you want to do an audio tag. So it says okay. the file saved do you want to record an audio tag? And I'm going to say yes, because I always tag mine when I save them yes. so I can find them later. I heard an audio tag. Bedtime stories. Bedtime stories. So I just added an audio tag to my file so I can find it. So... I'm going to go ahead and recognize the text on this. So it will OCR this for me. Okay, so we've got our zones now. So now you can see that we have page navigation. So I took two um, pages. So you could take, you know, captures of, you know, 10, 20 pages and it, they will all be listed here. And you can um, go to the beginning of the book, the end of the book. You can go navigate page by page. Um, so it jumped to page two. And um, you can you can change your reading views from here as well, which I'll. Um, demonstrate again here in a minute. Um, but let me show you how to how to get back to this file after you've saved it. You can go ahead and start reading it right away or you can um, get exit Check. Previous. and um, you can go back to it later. So if I want to you know read this, uh, bedtime story later tonight. I can go into my into my menus and you go to file, file manager. and you're going to open the file manager bedtime story. and right here um, in my files it just said bedtime stories which I did my audio tag earlier so I tapped on that and it said what that file was. So I can go ahead and open that. And I see that, yep, this is my um, document that I just captured. So we can open that and then um, you can start reading it. You can start reading it. Um, oops. Check. Wait, back. Next. So, oh, I kind of went through that quickly. Um, File. Restore that bar. Page two of two. One. So let's look at page one here. Read document. Hi, button. Read document. One, zero. Pio myth 15 Miko's wild ride. Four, six, what a perfect day for a canoe ride. Pocahontas said to her friend, meet with a raccoon. Lounged in the boa. So um, it, it can start reading. Um, in whatever view you have saved as your default, um, which we'll go over in a minute. I'll show you how to do that. Um, but yeah, you can you can add pages as well um, from here. 
you just keep hitting that capture button and it'll say add image. So even um, um, even if you have a document and you want to add another uh, bedtime story to that document, you can just keep adding pages as well. So Justine, we did have a question that came into the chat that was actually yeah. a really good question. Uh, Kristen asked, can you manually reorder the reading zones if necessary? And the answer no. to that is no. So the, right. the software is automatically setting up the zones and basically they're just gonna be automatically numbered. So there's no way to re reorganize them manually. That's correct. Yeah, you'll you'll just take um, the screen capture of whatever document you're trying to read, and it will it'll automatically kind of order those zones for you. Um, and if it doesn't, you just want to discard that and try it again um, with those little you know tips and tricks that we've mentioned before with having, you know, good lighting, um, getting, you know, natural light from a window or a, a desk lamp light, um, or, you know, tapping the screen to get it to focus um, and just kind of holding it over where all of the text is fitting in the screen um, and just holding it steady and um, getting that capture. And I took a capture and it um, you could see that it had the title as zone one and then the two columns as the other two zones. So it it's usually really good about picking up the zones, I find. It um, is, yeah. And you know, the different views, I know we're going to cover more of that afterwards too, but changing the views also makes such a big difference when you are reading the material that you have. And one of the other webinars we had prior, and I believe Betsy Ann put them in the chat, was we have one specifically on capturing, um, you know, naming files, transferring them back and forth between your computer and the Juno as well. Um, yes, yes, we do. We have a whole webinar where um, we we capture different reading materials and um, we have a webinar specifically on the file manager as well. I know I quickly just showed you how to get to it, um, but we do have a webinar specifically that shows how to import and export um, files using a USB-C flash drive and also um, using the USB uh, cable that comes with Juno. Um, and that data cable can be plugged in to your laptop and you can transfer files to and from Juno. So we can link you to that um, previous webinar as well. I just don't think we'll have time to, to show that one today. And Betsy Ann did just post that. We had another Thank question, you. Justine, um, about reorganizing the pages after the pages are imaged and OCR'd. Um, can you reorganize them or do you have to delete an entire thing and re-image for a new order? So if you wanted to change the page order. Um, again, it's just you need to capture them in the correct order because you cannot reorder them. Um, so if you, yeah, you just need to capture them in order. In the correct order, yeah. So you'd have yeah. to delete it yeah. and then go back. And then you can it. jump, you can add more pages or you can navigate page by page, but you can't change the, like if you want page 10 to be page three. Yeah. Yeah. And that's a good question, but yeah, no, it's, it's basically made to be a super portable, easy to use, quick access to OCR. I know we had some people yes. that some of the original questions that came in, uh, you know, there was some confusion even to what the Juno was. So it's really a, a handheld video magnifier that then incorporates in OCR scanning capabilities. So it gives you some of that, um, the features and functionality of larger desktop machines, I'd say, or even of a computer in some regards, right? Because you're able to snap pictures, save them, 
and go back and recall them as you showed just now. Uh, but at the end of the day, it's it's also a video magnifier. Yes. And it's it's great. <laughs> yeah, it's great to have something that's so portable that you can take with you and have access um, to printed text anywhere you go. It's 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 nice. Um, so I'm going to jump back into the PowerPoint and go through a couple slides and then I'll show you the the different reading views. Um, so I want to quickly uh, talk about the voices and languages. So there is um, a different, there's a female and a male voice, and there's um, different voices for, for the each of those. Um, and you can have a you can have a voice for just reading. And then you can have a voice um, for the menus because the menus are spoken aloud. Um, so you can have a different voice for those two um, different areas if you want, or you can have the same voice. All of that, it can be set up um, when you go through and choose what voice you want. And then there are four different languages. There's Spanish, French, German, and Chinese. And the default is going to be English, um, but again, you can go in and, and change uh, if you want it to to be in reading in Spanish. You can do that. And one thing I want to clarify on that is that we get a lot of the a lot of people will ask us, "Does it translate text?" That was one of the key things uh, that I had people asking me at annual meeting. Yeah, and you know, no, it doesn't translate text. Um, I mean, the translation has come a long way over the years, but it's still not to the point where I think we would want to incorporate it into a device like this just yet. And so you'd have to have the material in this foreign language. So if you have it in Spanish, French, German already uh, and scan it, it will then read it with the correct inflection and um, accent and everything, but it doesn't translate. Right. So if you're in, you know, Spanish class or French class, you can use this to read um, and enlarge your your reading materials for that class. Uh, and then I just have a quick slide here about the different viewing modes. Um, so you can toggle there's a button, the top right button. You can select that um, and you can go between the snap snapshot mode. Um, so that'll show the full screen of the text. And then, so that's kind of like your live image. And then you can do the teleprompter uh, mode, which shows the text in the paragraph form. And then the the ticker tape mode just shows text one line at a time. And then, um, like I, you kind of saw, as soon as you capture something and recognize an OCR that text, it's going to put you in the zones mode. So it will go automatically and do the zones for you. And then from there, you can switch it to any of those other three options. And then there's another box um, that you can switch the, it's on that right-hand side and it's just the, the button below the viewing modes button. And you can toggle between um, boxed or underlined. So however you want to emphasize and highlight your words as um, you're reading them, you can do a box or an underline. And I can switch back to my Juno and I'll do a quick demonstration of those different uh, reading views. So let me switch back over here. Let's see if my if you can uh, 
Has it come up yet? Oh, yes, there it we is. got it. Okay, so I'm just going to go to my files. Um, And here's one. Um, Restore that. One. So I've got um, a document up here. Change to a niche bucket. So I took. Um, I took this capture earlier and it's in the, the different zones and you can change this. Not sure, there we go. So it's in image mode now, which is just the, the full image. So it'll it'll read it to you with just like the the live view image, or you can. Um, now we're in the teleprompter mode. So I found it when I demoed this uh, to a bunch of people a couple months back at annual meeting. They really loved the teleprompter mode because it got rid of a lot of the visual clutter. And then yes. you can customize the text, which Justine, show how in this mode, how you can change the color so quickly and easily by just pressing those buttons, basically on the left-hand side, the color contrast buttons, the blue buttons. I mean, you can quickly switch over to all these different color contrasts and it remembers your favorites. Yes. Um, I think it's got like 24 different combinations and you can save um, your favorites so you can get to them even quicker. Um, I just love, I I always have different um, colors <laughs> uh, and I, I switch between them quite frequently depending on the time of day or what I'm doing. Um, I'll have different colors. So yeah, you can you can change your colors, you can increase your text. Um, and it's just, it's really nice. And you can always adjust your um, volume and speech rate right from the restore your button bars. And that'll bring up your menus and you can um, adjust your, to you can adjust your speech rate to be faster or slower or your volume to be louder or softer. So you can always jump to, uh, there really quickly. Hi, button bar. And then to get to your page navigation that you go to your, you restore your button bar and it's at the top. It has the different page. One to two the different pages and you select that and you can switch between your pages. Hi, button bar. Um, so you can. A winter's tale, right, sunny, January day, when the H was trudging through the hundred on his way to visit his good friend, Hamlet was sick in bed with sniffles, 19. <laughs> Happy to see his friend. Hello, boob, he said snuffily. Oh, the lad, pause reading. Um, oh, the lad, you cue. Oops, Watch sorry, you have to. Restore. Um, Change to ticker tape. So this is the ticker tape. So this is one line at a time. And you can Hi, enlarge that. Watch you. Poor piglet said who? Next tea. He was just putting the kettle on when a large drop of icy water rolled. Pause reading. Uh, rolled out from underneath his head and down his nose. This reminded poor. Pause reading. Restore. Change to zone book. And then we're back to our we're back to our zones. And you can see when you change your color contrast, it also changes your colors of your zones. Black on error. So that's kind of helpful too to identify where the numbers are. Black on red. And this is a silly question, but 
what, how do we access those zones? What if we wanted to go? Because it's going to start reading where at the top of the page, correct? With zone one? Yeah, if you just hit play, it'll start at the top, but you can, um, let's say you're in a class and they want you to, you know, go to paragraph three and start reading from there. Um, you can just tap on the screen and it'll start reading from wherever you select. And it's going to start reading in your default reading view. And you'll see which my, one mine set up when I click. It's, um, right, sunny, January A. <laughs> when the H was trudging through the hundred about his way to visit his good friend. Like, you have it set up for teleprompter I mode. Think. Yep, that's okay, the one nice. I like. So. <laughs> Um, yeah, that seems it, to be the hit with a lot of people when I demo yeah. this. That's the, the one they like. Yep. Change to ticker tape mode. So that's how you change the the different uh, reading views. Does anyone have questions? And could you show ticker tape one more time as well? Change to ticker tape mode. So that's nice too, I think, because that really cuts out a lot of the visual clutter at that point, right? And then you just have that one complete line of text. Yeah, yeah, and you can. Hide volume. Hide. Read document. Night. Happy to see his friend. Hello, Boo. He said snuffily. El glad you cue. Ah you. Poor piglet. Said Pooh. I'll make tea. He was just putting the kettle on when a large drop of icy water rolled out from underneath his head and down his nose. This reminded Pooh of something. I brought you a present, Piglet. Pause. Yeah, so you can just read one line um, at a time as well, which is really nice. And so we had a question. That was a great question that just came yes. over. Uh, Devet asked, what magnification level are you on? And what is the maximum magnification? So uh, I'm not sure what level Justine's using right now, but this unit will go from 2x to 30x magnification. Volume and speech so you've got a wide range of magnification levels, 2 to 30x. Yeah, if um, I'm trying to remember where that's at. If you go to settings and you can go to, um, so you can have different, so it, when you're in your menus, you can adjust the, the size of your menus by just pressing the zoom in or zoom out button. So I'm just increasing the text size um, of the menus, but you can change it in reading settings as well. And this is where your languages are as well. Um, the, this is the viewing mode settings. This is where you can set your defaults. So um, mine is set to uh, mine is set to the teleprompter and the box. So you can you can switch it to be the underline from here. Or you can say, I want ticker tape mode and underline, and it will always open it in that um, options. And I think we had a prior webinar where we went over customizing this for individuals more so too, did we not? Oh gosh, yeah, that yeah. was one of the early ones. That's what I'm that like was. trying to remember. I know um, that we've done a bunch. We have, and this is where um, the languages are. And you can choose your um, reading voice. Um, this is where you can change, you can select all of your colors. And someone had asked, and I think that this goes kind of connects with that in a way too. They asked, how to make you know, this to be more joyful for students um, or how to use it uh, to make joyful activities. And some of this customization really helps with that. 
And then one of the things I've always done over the years, and Justine, I'm sure you have as well when you're working with students, is start out with something that they enjoy to get them used to the technology and using it um, you know, to access that tech. So, I mean, if you've got a student that's into race cars or into you know, um, some science topic or whatnot, you know, animals, start out by using it with that material. That's gonna be the most joyful for them is reading something that they enjoy. You know, you're not going to give a kid that hates history a history book and ask them to use this to read the history to start out um, because they're just they're already starting out in a negative. And, you know, allowing them to customize how it reads to them, changing those colors, changing, you know, the sizes, um, the views, all of that stuff really helps because it's it's their product now. They're customizing it to their needs. Yes. And that. Um, I think that was the tips and tricks menus. And we go through all of the menus, all of the customization. Um, and I just, I jumped in, it's in menu settings and you can see the big T that's where the text is. And it goes up to like 72 point um, font. So you can select what size is best um, for you or your student. Um, you can uh, change the colors. Um, and the menu voices and all that kind of good stuff. So um, I, I think we'll let uh, Mike jump in here and show you uh, some of these system settings um, is where we're going to talk about exam mode next. Absolutely. So Let's jump over to the slides first, and then I will, um, then from there, I'll jump into some of the system settings uh, and demonstrate the exam mode. So exam mode, 100% of you said you haven't used this. So uh, this is definitely something I think that is worth showing, obviously. And it's a really neat feature. It's kind of hidden in there. And the reason that it is hidden, uh, you'll understand as we talk more about it. So this is where you go in as a teacher. And if you wanted to set up specific instructions um, or lock out specific features. So if you wanted to allow the student to use the Juno as a magnifier during an exam, but cut out some of the other functionality, you can do so with this exam mode. Uh, so jump to that next slide, please. So to lock the Juno before giving an exam, um, and I'll show this live as well, but you're gonna tap the restore button the restore button is that button on the bottom left-hand side that are two arrows pointing out to the right-hand side. That's your restore button. Then you're going to tap the main menu button. The main menu button is on the top left-hand side, and it's the three lines. Uh, basically, it looks like three lines of text. Then you're going to tap on the settings icon. Then you're going to tap on the system setting icon to display the system settings screen. And I'll show this live again, as I said. So here comes the secret little code to that you have to do. So you then have to tap the battery indicator icon, which is on the top left corner of the screen. You're going to tap that seven times in less than three seconds. So just tap seven times and then click the capture button, which is the top right hand button, which is the camera button. That is then going to bring you into that option where you can set up the teacher settings or the exam mode. So next slide, please, on that. It's the hidden secret. It is. <laughs> it is. You know. <laughs> Get on your head, spin around three times, and yes. you know, touch your nose or something. <laughs> um, so it's the tap that battery button seven times and then hit the capture button. Uh, then you're going to hit next button to enter the lock code. So from there, um, basically, you can select what you want to choose. So inside there, there's a couple options. And I'm just going to briefly go over some of them. When you're in the exam mode, you can set the maximum volume. So if, for example, you wanted to limit the amount of volume the student can use, you can do so. You can disallow transferring to a USB. So that's important because during an exam, you might not want the student to be able to plug a USB in and take the exam you know, and save it to a USB drive to then go and share with other students, right? You can disallow to transfer from the USB. Uh, you can disallow file open. That's great because what if a student were to take a picture of a cheat sheet before taking the exam? You don't want them accessing that and viewing their cheat sheet as a saved document inside the Juno. 
You can disallow file save. You can disallow capture. You can disallow OCR text recognition. Um, you can disallow reading. You also can allow different language uh, allowable recognize, you know, languages basically. So all languages are going to be available by default, but you can cut out some of those. You can also set up when do these uh, files, excuse me, when do these settings expire? So the default is four hours and 15 minutes, but you can go anywhere from 15 minutes up to 10 hours. And that's all in 15 minute increments. So if you know the exam period is only two hours, you can set this up to you know, be locked down for two hours. Uh, and then you can reset the teacher settings or you can reset the entire product to factory settings. So any of those options are available. So I'm gonna actually go in here um, and show it live. So if you wanna, let me highlight or switch over to my USB. And then if you wanted to highlight or spotlight my camera for a second. Got you. Awesome, thanks Betsy. And so what this will now do is this is going to, I'm just on my simple magnification mode here. I'm looking at a magazine and I'm going to tap on that restore button. So right now I'm in regular magnification mode, bottom left-hand side, those two arrows, I tap that. I'm now going to click on the top left menu, main menu button. That brings me into my main menu. From here, I'm now going to click on the um, settings icon, which is on the bottom right-hand side. I tap that. I'm now gonna click on my system settings, which is the bottom right-hand button. And now I'm inside of my system settings. So this is where you need to be in order to access the exam mode option. Now what I'm going to do is tap seven times on the top left, you'll see the little plug icon and the battery icon. I'm gonna tap that seven times, and then I'm going to quickly press the capture button, which is the red camera button from there. So give me a second to do this. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then I press that capture button. I did it correctly. So now I am inside of my teacher settings option. And so inside of here, I'm going to now just scroll up and you'll see the reason that some of these are scrolling left to right is because I have on a larger font size. The larger my font size, you'll see, and I'm just pressing my plus button or I can pinch and zoom to, to shrink the screen. So I can choose here my maximum volume setting. When I tap that, I can scroll and choose how high do I want the volume to be able to go? Do I want to disallow transferring to USB? Yes. Disallow file opening? Yes. Disallow reading? Yes, because this is a reading exam, so we want them to read. And expire settings. I'm going to set my settings here for two hours exactly. So all I do is scroll up, and we can go anywhere from zero to 10 hours. So we're going to set it at two hours and I can go in 15 minute increments. So two hours period. And now on the bottom right-hand side, I'm going to click my continue option. This is where I now as a teacher set up the locking code. So the locking code is something that we're gonna set up and let's just set it as one, two, three, four, five. And now I'm going to click lock on the bottom right hand side. This is now set. My teacher settings are set in here. So the students locked, they cannot access certain things. So they're not going to be able to access our file, you know, to open or to save files, whatever settings we chose. If I want to go back in there now to the teacher settings, I'm going to click on my restore button again. I'm going to click on my menu, main menu settings. I'm going to click on system settings and I'm going to tap seven times and then hit the capture button. Now this is telling me enter your lock code. To get back into this, this is set this way because if I were a teacher, I set this up before 
the student gets their hands on the unit. And now if the student knew those secret codes on how to get in there by tapping the battery seven times and hitting the capture button, this is gonna prevent them from changing those settings, right? So now I just gotta go in here and tap in one, two, three, four, five, because those are the, that's the code that we set. And then on the bottom right-hand side, I hit unlock. And now I'm back into my teacher settings. So I can now customize this or change this if I wanted to. If I wanted to come back into reset to factory settings, I can easily do so. I don't want to do that. Um, or I can also reset my teacher settings. So yes, I'm going to. And now I'm just going to get out of here by hitting the restore button on the bottom left. And that just brings me back. And now I'm back. My unit's unlocked. It's a full working Juno unit. Um, so you can customize that, set those, you know, a code and come in here at any time to do that. Um, so that is basically your exam mode settings on how to do that. And I'm going to end that and then go into if there's any questions um, thus far from any of the demos that we've done that Justine has done. Anything that you want to see us show more in depth again, um, just let us know. We're happy to do that. All right, nothing's come into uh, the chat just yet, but make sure you're putting your questions or anything you'd like demonstrated in the chat. But we can go to some of the questions that we received before the webinar. Um, one person says that they're having issues with battery length. What can you do to uh, keep the battery lasting longer? So one um, of the key things, or Justine, tell me, I'm gonna, I was just gonna say, one of the key things I found is Oftentimes there's confusion with if the unit is totally powered down or not. So if I were to press the top left power button right now, just quickly, you have no signal because my, I just put my Juno to sleep. If I press that button again right now, it instantly is going to come back on and it might take it a second for my um, video capture to pick that up, but it instantly comes back on for me. And that's just going into sleep mode. So the unit's still running, it's just in sleep mode at that point. So it is still using a minimal amount of battery while it's just in sleep mode. If I wanted to do a complete power off, you have to press and hold that power button until you hear the nice little melody that it's gonna play for you. Once it plays that you know, little melody, you know that it is then powering off totally. That's gonna save you the most battery life. Um, and you know, continuous use, it's rated, I believe, for what, three hours, is it, Justine? Yep, yep, three so, hours. So it's three hours continuous use. Now that's gonna be depending. If I'm doing this, I'm zooming in, I'm zooming out, I'm going into menu a lot, I'm changing settings, I'm doing, that's gonna decrease your battery life. Um, you know, over the course of a couple of years of using Juno, you might notice that your battery life is also going to decline. So it's going to go as, as with anything, right? We have cell phones. When you buy a brand new cell phone, you might have a, you know, 12 hour battery life on that thing. But the more you use it, it starts to de decline. That's going to be the same for the Juno. Uh, but one of the battery saving features I would say is if you're not going to use the Juno for a couple hours at a time, fully shut the unit down. If you're in school and you're going between classes and you're going to be using it um, frequently, then just hit that sleep mode, which is just a quick tap of the power button. Juno, uh, Juno. Justine, anything that I missed there? Um, no, that's what I was going to suggest is just the the different um, sleep options. And then um, where where was I when we were in the menus? There was a there's a setting in there with the Z's on it. It's an icon, and that's where you can set how long um, Juno stays awake. So if you want it to go to sleep um, quicker, you know, if it's set on there for like 30 minutes, um, you you may, and, you know, your student is sitting in class listening, and then you, their Juno is just sitting there on. Um, you might want it to go to sleep after a couple of minutes of not using it. So that should help with the battery as well. So it's not just sitting on their desk and it's just sitting there on because you have that set where it won't go to sleep for like 30 minutes. Um, 
That's a great point. And I just pulled that up yeah. here on my screen. So yes. you know, to get to that, you're going to go to your settings menu, the main menu, bottom right-hand side is your settings. And then bottom left-hand side is user settings. And then the middle button there is yes. your standby time. That's right. Yeah. So, and so you can yeah. customize that totally. Default is the 30 minutes. Yeah. So you might want to just adjust that to be a quicker, um, quicker standby time where it will go to sleep after a couple minutes of not using it. And then you can just quickly, like Mike said, just press that power button to get it um, to turn back on. So someone here uh, just asked a question about, please show the net, uh, what the text looks like, it went away, at the minimum 24 and the maximum font 72. So of course that's gonna depend on what text you're looking at originally. If I'm looking at, so right now I'm looking at a, a magazine, a Reader's Digest magazine, and here is the smallest font that we have. That's zoomed all the way uh, to minimum zoom. Now that would obviously change if I were to take something like the title of this article, right? That's a larger font to begin with, so it looks larger. There's your regular, you know, magazine font there. So now if I come into maximum, I'm just holding the magnification and it's bringing us into maximum. And there is our maximum on that magazine. And if I go up to the the title font, you'll notice you're not even getting full letters there because I'm going to zoom out a little bit because that font is so large. So it's going to depend on what you're looking at originally, but the magnification level is from 2x to 30x magnification. So I think yeah. that's a truer um, view of it is 2x to 30x. The font that's size is going to be when you're looking at something that's scanned in. So if we come in here to, let me open a file that I have saved. Um, so let's open up this document. And I'm going to view this as, Still access. sorry, I'm going to change this to a different view. So if we're in our teleprompter view here, oh, sorry, I hit the wrong button. Uh, we're in teleprompter mode here. Here's your minimum font. And there's your maximum font. Oh, is so, this the skills, the checklist? Yeah, this is the skills checklist, which is a great document that you created, Justine, here. And I think we're going to talk about that later, too. I, um, oh, okay, good. So yeah, here, I want to make sure they know where that's located. Yeah, that's an important one to know. Here's your minimum font. And there's your maximum font. And that's in the ticker tape mode. And if we go back over here to an exact view, this is an exact view. And that is, I'm zooming into maximum mode here. Here's your maximum. And. And you can adjust the, the same way in minimum. your menus too, the, the font size in your menus, by just hitting the plus or minus. Yes, which is great too. And I'll show that yeah. here in a second. If I come into my menu, uh, main menu, and you'll notice I'm pressing plus. So main menu at the top is getting larger and you can make that as small or large. And as Justine showed earlier, you know, right now I have on a high contrast black text on a white background, but I can go over to a white text on black background, black on yellow. I can customize the menu, how the menu looks too. But great question with the font sizes. Um, and any other questions? Terry said, thanks for the links to previous Juno webinars. Uh, I can't copy those links. Please remind me how to get to those webinars. So I think we will share how to access those. And then um, Justine, you were going to talk about the file that I was just showing. Um, yeah. So we have a checklist and it's available on the APH.org website. And if you go to the Juno product page um, in the, I think it's in the downloads section. Yeah, because all the, the manuals 
um, section has all the user guides um, for the device. So in the download section of that page, you'll find the skills checklist. We just and, put those together. So uh, yeah. manuals and downloads is now one accordion section. So. Oh, OK. Yeah, that, that's oh. literally within the last couple of weeks. And that's oh, a, OK. And that is a wonderful document, because if you are trying to assess a student's, you know, basically their skills, right? Um, or if you want to use that for yourself to just go through and see what skills you've learned while you're practicing with the Juno, uh, that's a fantastic file. And yeah, it has all the features um, in different categories, just all, everything laid out in kind of a checklist format. And um, you can put what level uh, your student is at in their learning. You know, has it just been introduced? Are they, um, have they mastered it, the dates? Um, so you can really adjust, um, yeah, like what they're learning. You can get your goals from this document and kind of say, you know, these are the goals we're working on. Um, mastering and then you can put when they mastered those and it has lists everything out that the Juno can do um, and we kind of use this for our webinars as well it follows along with this checklist um, with all the different features and functions that it can do um, so yeah it's it's a and really helpful it. document I pulled it up and shared my screen here, Justine, so people yeah, can see. Yeah, thank you. Oh, you're so welcome. You know, navigating the menu, navigate the button bar, tap the restore button. It shows you an image of the restore button so you can assess them and see, and it just walks you through everything. So it's a great visual, you know, learning tool as well for this, for the Juno. So I can stop sharing that, but that's that's it. And to, to find it, um, as Justine said, it's on the menu. I mean, excuse me, on the APH website under Juno. Yep. And for yeah. the person asking how to find the webinars um, that have been recorded, search American Printing House for the Blind on YouTube. We have our own channel there. And under playlists, you'll find Access Academy. That's the name of our webinar series. And you can search for Juno you know, Tips and Tricks webinars from there. Another question we had that I think that's worth answering is, and we get this often too, is how do you clean the camera, the lights, or the rotating piece? Um, and what I found is the best thing is to use just a lens cloth, like a, a microfiber um, lint-free lens wipe, the same one that you might use for your eyeglasses, if you wear eyeglasses, or treat it like a camera lens, like you're cleaning a high-end um, camera. And so you'll want to do that. And then the same on the screen. Um, the only thing that I've ever used on my screen, if I've loaned this out and I get it back with fingerprints um, or you know sticky fingers or greasy fingers, um, is a higher end, like a higher percentage isopropyl alcohol. So you know I've got in my office some little um, alcohol prep pads uh, that you can pick up at the pharmacy. These are seventy percent isopropyl alcohol. Um, that works, just quickly wipe that on to cut the grease and then wipe it with that lens wipe cloth and that cleans it. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, you don't want to use any abrasive cleaners. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, no, definitely not. <laughs> or spray anything. <laughs> no, don't spray it. Or, yeah. And I'm looking through to see if there were any other questions we have that... Uh, someone did ask about the carrying case. So it does come with a protective carrying case. And that protective carrying case does have a strap that it comes with as well. Uh, you can click that. That strap is removable. So you can take it off of it if you want. Yes, I, I, have, I have the case right here. It's a padded, um, protective padded uh, zipper case. And the Juno fits um, into it. And the little quick start book can also fit inside as well. Um, and it does have a carrying strap. It's just a normal, like a purse or, you know, handbag or 
luggage bag. It's just a regular, to, you know, tote bag kind of strap, and it can um, be strap uh, clipped on or off. So I don't know if you can see that, but <laughs> that's the case. We can probably spotlight you if I stop sharing my video. We might be able to spotlight you. Oh. And, <laughs> and then we'd be able to, Betsy, if you want to spotlight Justine there for a second, that might help. There you go. So I've got the bag. This is the carrying case for it with the strap that's adjustable. Um, it's an adjustable strap um, that can be clipped on or off. And it's just a, a padded um, protective case in the Juno. Um, well, I can probably unplug it from my computer. Um, the Juno fits right into the bag. And then the, the user guides that come with the Juno can also fit in there with it too. We made them the size that could fit in the bag. So there it is, Juno's in its bag, ready to go. So that's really yeah, that's, nice. That is nice. Is a demo unit available for assistive technology centers? Um, we can work with you to get a demo unit, I believe. Um, we've got some different local reps that can provide support for it. And then we also have, um, you know, myself or anybody at APH, but we could definitely help out with a demo unit, I believe. Yeah, if you'd like to send an email to this, to the address I'm about to place in the chat, we can figure out um, how we can get you in touch with someone to get a demo unit. I'm just looking here quickly to see if there's any other questions we didn't answer. Uh, someone did ask the weight of the Juno and the weight of the Juno is 1.27 pounds. So 1.27 pounds. And anything else that we missed, Betsy Ann or Justine? Um, we have reviewed how you can capture multiple pages of a book and combine them into a file. Um, someone had a question specifically about an, an app called Notability. Is that something we can address? So I haven't used Notability. Is that a website? Is it web-based? Um, and how, let's see. I'm wondering if you could take files from that. So it looks like it's an app. Yeah, so that's an app. Uh, so if you can transfer things from Notability to your computer as a PDF file um, or as a Word document, you could then transfer it from there to your Juno. But there's not going to be a direct link from Juno to Notability because you're not able to download apps to the Juno. And there was some interest in seeing uh, how files can be transferred on and off the device. So we did an entire webinar on that where we transferred via the cable that comes with the mm -hmm. Juno. So you do get uh, a, an included cable. And then we also did it with the uh, USB um, card. So you have a USB, you know, and we recommend it on the Juno page on the APH website. There's a um, specific one that you can purchase online aftermarket that's a USB-C to USB-A. Any other questions? And I see someone asked about the closing code. I think we are getting close to it, right, Betsy Ann? We're about 15 minutes away, but if we don't have any other questions that we can address, we can always wrap up early. I'm looking to see if there's any other questions that we haven't hit, but I think we've covered most of them here. Um, Yep, the exporting documents. Uh, I'm trying to see if I can find my. And then. I've got my USB 
um, this is the USB um, C to USB A that we have linked on the Juno product page on APH.org website. Um, and you can just put this into uh, Juno. This is how I found it to be the easiest is just to put all of your documents um, that you want to have throughout the day. Um, you can put them, save them all on the flash drive, and then you can just put it right into Juno. And let me see if I can if I can get my plug back in really quick. Am I back? Switch. Um, can you see my Juno yet? Not yet. Oh dear. Not sure why. There we go. There we got yeah, it. I just, I just always have a, I have a big delay <laughs> on mine, so I just keep going. Um. So if you go to, so I have plugged in the flat the, the USB C flash drive. And if you go to your file manager um, and you open up, so, Bed, bedtime story. so um, this is what we took a capture of earlier. File. Open file. So you can take things from Juno to the USB-C or from the USB-C to Juno. And I was just going to say, so the file types that you can transfer, uh, the Juno yeah. will support JPEG, PNG, BMP, WEBP, text, rich text, PDF, and DOCX files. Um, those are all supported. And then uh, your files from the Juno themselves are the Sparrow compressed book files. So those are not, but the Juno can support all files with um those links that I mentioned. Open file manager. And I can put those in the chat as well here, I think. Give me a second. My yeah. computer's just moving a little slow. I'm trying to remember how to get to that import export button. It when you plug in your USB C, um, when you plug in the flash drive, you get that import export button. I can't remember. Files. PDF file. So yeah, you've got all these different um, I can't, I can't remember how to get there. Do you remember, Mike? I believe when you plug it in, um, set, I believe it's under setting, or was it right under the files? You know what? I'd have to get mine out here and see if I can figure it out as well. I can't remember off the top of my head. Give me a second, I'll tell you. Yeah, that was the, la the last one we did, that webinar. Preview. All right, so give me a second here, I'll tell you. Uh, so you're gonna tap the file manager icon Preview. and then the file screen Preview. shows file up. Manager. And then the transfer button should show up there on the bottom right-hand side. It should be the um, arrow moving down and an arrow showing, like pointing down and an arrow pointing up. Yeah, that's what I thought. It's not there. Sure. And it might be because you've got the video capture card plugged in as well at the same time, maybe. Oh, no, there it is. There you go. Okay, so now I'm up. not yeah. crazy. I'm like, where's my button? <laughs> Here it is. <laughs> so as soon as you plug it in correctly, I don't think I had it in all the way. Um, 
your your transfer button comes up and then um you can export file to usb see all those files i have on there i can export that to my usb c or i can import i can import the files um from my flash drive on to here so i selected the usb um Previous directory. Juno. Previous directory. And there's three items. Next. Yes. So it's just saying that. What does it say? Zero files transferred successfully. The following files were not overwritten. AVRT biopic JPG apps real rep. Okay. Oh, because these. So. It's not going to duplicate my files. These are the ones I already put on here from our last webinar. So it's just saying like you already have those on there. <laughs> and I think no, exactly. It's like, what are you trying to do? But I mean, but at least now you show. That's how nice. <laughs> so I don't here. have like the same uh, document on there three times. So that's how you do it. You just put your device, your USB in and import it. Um, from your file manager, whatever you save on this flash drive will go right onto Juno. Yeah, and that's nice to show that. Yeah, I just wanted to show it really quick. We had a few minutes. Okay. All right, well, if we have no other questions, we can go ahead and wrap up this webinar. Paul, I'm we can then go to our the discovery slide. Yeah, we can go to our discoveries. And we've talked about the fact that there are many different ways to read on the Juno, lots of different settings, zones, exact view, ticker tape, teleprompter, and live view. And we also showed you that exam mode uh, locks down certain features on the Juno for students taking exams. You can pick which of those you want locked down and for how long. And very, very important, uh, we've showed you the skills checklist that's available on the product page. You'll go to the manuals and downloads tab. Uh, if you're familiar with it before, there were two tabs uh, for manuals and one for downloads. We've combined those together uh, to make the confusion a little bit less. So just go to that manuals and downloads tab and you'll see all those things that were in two places now in one. Uh, so go to aph.org slash product slash Juno to get that information and download that checklist or anything else, uh, the, the manual, anything else that, that would be helpful to you. Uh, let's talk about the price of the Juno. It's available for quota and non-quota customers. If you are a quota customer, the price is $1,177. If you're a non-quota customer, the price is $1,392. All right. Well, this is the end of a long road together. We've gone through the Juno from unboxing to this, the final chapter. So thanks to everyone who stuck around for all six webinars in the series. And again, if you'd like to start from the beginning, they are all available on our YouTube channel. Just search American Printing House for the Blind on YouTube, go to Access Academy, and you'll find our junior webinars there. Big thanks to our two wonderful panelists who've been with us the whole time, Justine Taylor and Mike Wood, who've really made this, um, this webinar series happen. And definitely check out that skills checklist. It's a great way to review what you've learned and what you have yet to learn on the Juno. Uh, we do know there's gonna be some more content available on the Hive for the Juno. So if you haven't been to the Hive yet, or if you've only been to get your ACV REP credit, definitely check out the Hive, get registered, it's free, and uh, see all of the great content that's there now and stay tuned for more content as it gets launched.